Hello, everyone. This is John Burgos, and welcome to today's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And I hope you guys are ready, because we're going to talk beyond what we're talking about, what we've been talking about. We've been talking about how different energies have been affecting us and what we can do with those energies and how we're growing into them. But there's another conversation to be had. And if any audience is ready for it, it's this one. And if anyone is going to lead us in that conversation, I couldn't think of a more perfect person to do it than Sandra Walter. Um, Sandra just has this innate awareness, um, understanding and connection, not only to what's going on, but as a way shower and gatekeeper into our ascension, she has personally, for me, really demonstrated, talked about what's becoming possible in a way that allows us to access those energies before they even get here. It's like, it's almost like we're reverse engineering something different. And in that, we're also redefining how it is that we get there. And so today's topic of transmuting archetypes, it's so perfect and I'm so excited for this call. So it's going to be a wonderful call today. Sandra's going to take live Q&A as well. So if you want to ask your personal question, you can press start to on your phone if you've dialed in on the phone line, or you can type your question onto the webcast page. And today we're going to be talking about learning to transmute archetypes with which are no longer applicable. We're going to create our own massive acceleration into higher timelines of unity consciousness and discover how to embrace the new template of the divine self. And with that, I want to give any of you who may not be familiar with Sandra a brief introduction. So Sandra is a way shower, ascension guide, and gatekeeper. As an interdimensional liaison, Sandra assists awakened humans through writing videos in a deeply comprehensive ascension path online training class. Sandra shares information as a conduit to empower, inspire, and accelerate the ascension of humanity. Sandra is currently also on mission in Manchester, California, where I had the pleasure to finally meet her in person. And just, again, just connecting with her on today's conversation is going to take you to a whole different vibration. And connect with her in person also was just um, such a thrill and such a confirmation of of my awareness of what she carries and, and the awareness and, and the vibration that she holds for anyone who works for her individually, but also for all of us collectively. Um, and it's with that, Sandra, that I want to welcome you to the call. Thank you for being here today. Blessings, John. So wonderful to be here. Blessings, everyone. Yeah. So, Sandra, transmuting archetypes, can you define... First of all, what the archetypes mean to you and and why do you feel that there's a shift going on with the way that we perceived certain elements or, or certain paths along the way? Certainly. Well, when we're talking about archetypes, and archetypes just means um, an old pattern or, or an ancient pattern uh, that gets used. And this is something that in like classic union theory you know Carl Jung put together these different types that people fit into and it was interesting when this presented because we've been talking a lot about timelines and divine templates of self and divine blueprints and suddenly this topic of transcending archetypes was presenting and I found it really potent to the what we are going through in 2017 that we were indeed feeling not just the energies but actually a redefining ourselves and our and and our consciousness and our existence as we transcend into this new thing and while the new thing is associated with our future selves. You know, we're kind of running into ourselves through this ascension process of merging these these different dimensions and densities. But I found it really interesting to explore this on a heart level of witnessing our own evolution. 
actually witnessing the, the collective and, and me, my own personal journey, witnessing not just the sensations of transcending my lower level consciousness, but actually moving into something that was brand new. And when I opened up and asked uh, my higher levels about this and my divine team, the things that came back were just so, it, it was just really fascinating to me. And I'm a bit of a, an ascension geek. So <laughs> I really enjoyed kind of digging into this and seeing how it's tied to the timelines and the dimensional shift and what's going on with this universal rewrite and the photonic light energies and all of the, you know, the catchphrases that we're always using in our community and kind of taking them to the next level and having this really deep comprehension of how all of this fits together. And it was it was beautiful to meet you in person, John, because uh, when we you know, sat down and, and talked together, we were both kind of craving this next level conversation mm -hmm. because so much has been unveiled in our personal journeys and the collective journey and about ascension itself and the frequencies coming onto the planet. It's no longer just a hearsay or a theory. We're actually feeling that true embodiment. And transcending archetypes, is is if we move into um, these lower timelines are dropping away. That's something that's been happening, you know, since last September. And now we're getting into um, these higher realities of Christ consciousness, unity consciousness are starting to be embodied. And the archetypal realities of old earth are rapidly transmuted as we embrace and embody this next level of ascension. And it's kind of like a divine dance, a synchronized vibrational exchange of higher light and expansion that we integrate, level up. And this keeps happening, but the expansion now is at a point where we are realizing that there, we're kind of at the point of no return. And this accelerates as time dynamic shift to accommodate a less dense, less linear version of collective realities. And time, uh, this speed that we talk about, you know, accelerating time or, or the time collapse, it's called both things. Speed is just an increase in complexity or the amount of change or unusual events which occur within our experience. So the, the photonic light is ordering things. You know, photonic light is all about ordering. When you talk about going into the photon belt or going into these highly charged areas of space, the photonic light actually connects events. It synchronizes events and change and organizes our realities into unity consciousness. And that's like one of the keys to unity consciousness it's not just what you feel within your your own beingness as unconditional love and this ordering of your own consciousness, but it's actually this function of this rewriting of, of the universe that's happening through this photonic light. And this connecting the dots, this reordering, is unification. So acceleration is witnessed in the amount of change happening within our experience of linear time. So when a lot is happening and a lot is happening and a lot is happening, we're watching this in external events. And when we say a lot is going on, it's this organizing function of photonic light. And it's a reflection of the macrocosmic reorganization or rewrite at the universal level. So harmony is commanded by source and achieved in the higher realms. And then our denser reality mirrors this on this microcosmic level through these rapid changes in our consciousness. And this is something that we're experiencing on a personal level. We have evidence in just this life stream, just this one incarnation of rapid shifts in consciousness and collectively as demands for peace, order, harmony are consistently hitting collective tipping points or triggers in our evolution. So we have this simultaneous creation of the new 
and revelation and reordering and this new universal layer of consciousness. And it's it's really beautiful to witness this and it's kind of like a little check in point for us in this very, you know, somewhat bizarre and, and definitely um in my personal experience at least, it is going very quickly and a lot is happening just within our own consciousness, uh, within a very short period of time. And we can you know, we we just need to check in with ourselves and witness just within this one life stream that we're actually experiencing multiple incarnations in one incarnation. So we're kind of burning through rather than one linear unfoldment of a few lessons and experiences per lifetime, and you check out, you come back, do it again. We now have the capability to burn through all of these soul intentions and these lessons and move on to this accelerated evolution and ascension in one lifetime. And that is a reflection of this larger operation of complexity, more change, more order, more happening during this passage. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes tremendous sense. And it's really congruent with what I've been experiencing. What I love about this also is that the redefinition of the archetypes brings it helps to ground it in Sandra because it's so important because mm-hmm. there's so much information that runs around on the web through social media about what to expect during these times and, and really I <laughs> I can tell you that the definitions of what to expect don't apply anymore. It's I don't have to go through the ritualistic being tired or emotional things coming up or anger or other things necessarily Mm. during particular events that supposedly we're going to experience collectively because of astrology. We talked about that earlier. Um, It's we're each having individual experiences or we're having, dare I say, upgrade experiences of, of occurrences that are redefining how our ascension has taken place. Correct. And those Jungian archetypes, and the astrological archetypes and belief systems, religious dogma, the New Age beliefs, really all judgments about what the self was have to be surrendered, transmuted, transitioned back to source as we evolve and ascend into these new templates of the divine self. And this is this is the interesting part for me because the bridge is this Christ consciousness there's this this crystalline bridge it's the the templates for spirit in form have changed that's the, that's the only reason why we are experiencing this kind of distance from the from from the archetypes of the past it's because these templates have changed you know literally they dropped off last september and you know our consciousness is trying to keep up with with what's happening because it is so rapid and the, the templates have changed, as well as the record of our journeys here, including behaviors, thoughts, habits, beliefs, and uh, applicable archetypes which bridge the worlds, like solar cosmic Christ, crystalline consciousness, are being embodied en masse as these new templates emerge, because the Christ is a bridge between worlds, which is why it has the Savior connotation, and why masters like Yeshua said, you're going to do all this and more. You know, just like a primary Christed ascension timeline, we ride it to the next level because it bridges dimensions and densities. So we are creating new foundations during this passage, you know, templates to transition us to the new experience. But divine humans abandoned the old definition and transcend those patterns of the past. And shedding old archetypes is similar to shedding lower timelines. I see them as very similar or actually entwined. You know, there can be much entanglement, which seeks a new home when the energetic support is gone for a timeline or an archetype. And then you go through this, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to write about this soon, this identity crisis that people tend to go through in their ascension process because there's a bit of an identity crisis as this occurs you know identity is strongly tied to 
the egoic, the mental, emotional structures, and when people can't define themselves by the old templates or archetypes, they seek a new one, or at least something temporary, <laughs> a temporary belief to help them feel secure in their beingness. And we see this in in the New Age community. We see this in the polarity of identifying with a galactic identity or an ancient identity in the last few decades. You know, this is not, that's not a new conversation. You know, the, the New Age um, conversation about, you know, I'm a Pleiadian, I'm a Syrian, I'm a, I'm a Lemurian, I'm a, you know, Atlantean, all these things, you know, using a past or a future association with another civilization as a way to stabilize the lower self's need to seek an archetype <laughs> which fits mm-hmm. the emerging new self. And it, it does, it just doesn't a- apply any longer. You know, we've been, we've been using that for a couple of decades. You know, first waiver has been using that for a few decades. And you're going to notice, at least I am noticing, uh, within myself and within uh, the, the light tribe itself, that so many people, as we go through this embodiment, are realizing, I'm going to embody this very unique version of this crystalline consciousness and use that as a bridge to get to this higher future self, this thing we are becoming, which is beautiful and it, and it transcends time to not dynamics. It transcends dimensional and density expressions, just like a primary crisis at a t- ascension timeline, which I find is a really um, strong parallel as we bifurcate timelines to have this realization that, wow, those archetypes just aren't applicable any longer. And when we surrender and open up to the present moment, it's all about the now, the light and the intel available in this dramatically shifting passage we're experiencing, the new templates of the divine human, the highest self, the bridge of that Christed crystalline self, are revealed. And there's great freedom in this, and this freedom is an intention of the photonic light and these stargates, these highly amplified areas of space that we're moving into. So personally, we choose to engage with evolution, stay a step ahead with our ascension process, but when enough of us choose, which is going on right now, to embody the new type, the divine human, we shift into high gear on a collective level. So it dissolves these archetypes, which is the only reason why it's presenting right now, which are just not applicable to the new realities and the higher timelines. And it's beautiful because it's all vibrationally orchestrated. <laughs> Each step syncing with another, the timelines are parallels of what's happening in the higher realms and the drop off the archetypes is influencing various aspects of our journey along with the light and this creates this massive acceleration of the shift such as timeline and density drop off as well as this transmutation of first we were one thing and then we were another because we're actually experiencing what they call jump time rapid evolution within a short uh, a short time span but when in, in this particular cycle rather than going from one cycle to another we're actually transcending the whole operation you know we're not going to go through another 26,000 year cycle or whatever we're actually done with that so it's really I feel it's it's potent for everyone to uh, kind of breathe in and feel and meditate on that and witness your own evolution and also where there is resistance to opening up to the unknown because we are we are the beings, you know, the whole purpose of this kind of ascension that we're experiencing on this planet and in this solar system is to become these pure creator beings. So we have to realize that, oh, okay, so you know, how how do we define what we are? Are we going to be able to define what we're moving into? Well, right now we're moving into this crystalline Christ unity consciousness in order to create this bridge to this more mm, grandiose thing that, that's happening with the universe. But to be in, in the present moment and go, wow, 
you know, look look at what is happening to our consciousness. Look at how much is is truly changing, and to be open to embracing uh, the divine human. Those new templates is uh, is really beautiful. You know, it's something that that we approach with uh, gratitude or in a truly an open heart. You know, it's it's clear. You know, many of us are are just sitting here going. I know I am not the same person. This is not the same reality. So how do we embrace the the, the next level, the next thing? You know, and collectively, yes, we we help each other through that. But we are. It's also I, I feel as way showers part of our responsibility to say, look, this is I'm having a, a vastly different experience, and I'm going to embrace it and expand into that. So that all of these uh, old uh, archetypes that defined us and uh, and you know truthfully have been limiting us uh, for quite a long time um, are no longer applicable. You know, and then you start redefining your reality, and then it uh, you know the change within affects the change without. Yeah, I think that's wonderful, Sandra. It it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And I love what you bring into the conversation is I've been experiencing versions of it as well. And Mm -hmm. it got to a point, again, it's, it's wonderful having community and, and other people who are going through similar changes and people like you and there's other fantastic teachers that I really resonate with that um, provide a pathway to follow. But I find that lately for me, I really have to experience my own experience. I have to go into my own journey and then validate that for myself, whether I write it down, feel it, whatever it is for me to ground it in, to have an awareness of it, and then be bold enough to talk about it or to search about it and when you do that and find the confirmation afterwards then I find that you transcend the archetypes and you're you're becoming that sovereign state of being and you're finding that as a collective we're doing it but you're not influenced necessarily by the collective you're not going down the archetype path that many um, are still propagating um, just because they just they're, they're just not there yet or they're or that record's just broken on that particular beat and it'll skip that beat and jump when it's right for them. Um, but I think it's really important that we embrace and become intimate with what's happening with us first and then seek instead of seeking and applying. Correct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially when it comes to changes within the DNA. I mean, that's that's got to be one of the more dramatic aspects of this. Uh, of this ascension process is that our, our DNA is actually changing, and that's huge. You know, that's stuff that hasn't been turned on or activated or utilized, um, and it it won't. That new crystalline DNA will not be bound by a a Gaia centric. Um, astrological influence it won't be bound by um archetypes that are that are applicable to a 3D reality it just it's very it's actually resistant to it which is why you know some people wake up and some people don't you know the the whole awakening thing is is DNA based you know your consciousness is is flickering on and off it's what you do with it and when you um you know DNA is key to shifting the form into a new experience. And currently our DNA is receiving a much higher level of photonic stimulation, the solar plasma, cosmic rays, you know, all these things which trigger codes of ascension and unity consciousness. That's why so many are experiencing the phasing out of the old realities as well as the revelation of new ones because the the new somewhat physical template begins to resonate with the higher accelerated timelines and it's attempting to change our form you know we can we can repeat the new age dogma as much as we want oh you're changing into a body of light you're changing into 
a, a more crystalline form, you know, carbon silica based. But the but the new experiences can be anchored into your consciousness and then you know surge them through the morphogenetic field and make them available for the collective. You know, your DNA is constantly toggling dimensions and providing this new experience for the body and the mind. That's why so many people get exhausted as this light comes in. You know, you get these real knockout uh, days, hours, um, where where you just have to lay down, you know, because the physical is is trying to keep up with uh, with what we are commanding the body to do because we have this agreement that um, we're going to transmute and transform ourselves within this life within this life stream. So this blinking in and out of different states of consciousness is like this widespread thing that's occurring right now and it can feel disorienting or frightening or fascinating depending on your perspective. However, it's it's important to realize that your personal expression is is divinely important. You know, it's important to report back to source exactly what you are experiencing. You know, you as a fractal of source going, wow, this is really wild or wow, this is really cool, rather than defaulting to the um it's almost like like a, in a in an emotional clearing, you know, using suffering as a safety net, you know, kind of going back to uh old belief systems or oh, I'm just going to lean on uh these these old archetypes for a little bit longer until something changes. You know, we are the change. You know, remember that the the heart is infinite as you play with finite constructs of the mind level that might want to you know, kind of default to the old uh, archetypes or the old template, um, or or if it it gets into kind of a well, you, you go first, you know, that kind of thing. That's what way show is about: <laughs> is going first, so that people are like, I just want to see what happens to you, see if you blow your circuits out, or what's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> right now, you know, as the frequencies like emanating from Gaia are becoming stronger and stronger. You know, we have a planetary consciousness that's attempting to light up her spiritual sun at the core. You know, this crystalline core is is supporting pure creator beingness. You know, these are mm-hmm. big triggers we're going through. And then the responsibility becomes uh, personal. You know, how do you direct that energy for your personal path, your service work, responsible creation, don't ruminate, stagnate in the old timeline energies as they drop away. You know, move forward with clarity and joy and this open heart because so much more is becoming available to us. Well, Sandra, I want to actually take that back a step. How can we actually start taking ownership? Because there's so many people that are going through this DNA activation and these awakening, they're experiencing all these things and they're still waiting for something to massively shift. And frankly, they're in the middle of it, if not on the other side of it. Right. Right. Yeah. The waiting game has kind of been a plague of the light worker community for a while, but uh, it is, you know, this is, uh, again, it's just part of the process to learn that self empowerment is, um, is defined as such. It is a, uh, your personal choice to to get out of the whole mm, no it's not just a fascination but it's that in itself but gosh i feel like that in itself is becoming an archetype of let's just you know compare symptoms or well the energy today or oh i felt a flare and i had to take a nap it's like yeah 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 what else you know what we're supposed to be becoming creator beings what are you doing you know this is um this is really uh, such a, a beautiful opportunity for us to to truly dig in and go. You know what? I'm going to create this this new thing that I'm moving into. And once you realize, I have to create that. I have to create that container for my new consciousness. It's not going to be provided by anything else. You know, yes, there are energies that are going to come onto the planet and do things to the collective, but in in this tribe, in the light tribe, in the high vibe tribe, we don't wait for 
a, a flash of light or a disclosure event or reveal or anything like that. You know, we are taking full responsibility for the creation. That's what I mean by responsible creation is to, you know, take full empowerment of the journey and say the only way that I am going to break through those self-imposed barriers on my consciousness because we can't blame anything else for holding us back. You know, there there are no blockages to the ascension. We are going full blast into this thing uh, with open hearts and going, let's just, you know, I'm immortal. Let's see what's hap- what happens. And just running right into it, you know, and you consistently... <laughs> Test yourself and you do like the, the grounded thing to reflect the higher thing that's going on, which is higher self actually participating in these wild, like universal rewrites. You know, a lot of us are experiencing that formless realm of creatorship and, and spending uh, a lot of, you know, linear time in these wild meditations where with, with beings that have a consciousness that has transcended Form. I'm not even sure if they even played with form, but it's it's this uh, pure creator state of consciousness, which is really beautiful. And when you start playing with that, uh, you start interacting with these cosmic stargates, um, which is kind of just a, a grounded term for these. Um, hmm, how do I describe them? They are uh, energetic flows. Not wormholes, not gateways. They are um, these energetic flows that actually flow between universal expressions, if you want to go that big. But then they also flow through galactic expressions, solar expressions, into the planetary consciousness. But again, we are that thing. You know, we are that universe. So this is something when you realize what's happening with your own energy fields, that it is the the effect of this you know this photonic flow uh these cosmic stargates hold this intention to dissolve distortion rewrite the universe by and they utilize um geometry unfamiliar you know not even classic uh platonic uh geometry but light and advanced harmonics and and as with all of our experiences, this is just fractalization, just reflections of what's occurring at much higher levels of consciousness. We just suddenly have access to it uh, this year, and this, it uh, you know, to to my consciousness, this is is again a witnessing of this grand leveling up and this, this thing that's happening in the background, you know, beyond our our external you know, holographic uh, realities. And then our our etheric fields are getting restructured to complement this new template, the new DNA, and it it works in tandem with the activation of the solar aspects of the grid systems, the new earth grid systems uh, that were put into place by us in the future for this potentiality. So that whole running into yourself thing is happening again. And as the as the planetary experience self corrects and the timeline drop off and the five D influx, it also pushes the body vehicle to self correct evolution since the body belongs to Gaia. So this you know, this cosmic stargate influence uh is creating stronger shifts. And sometimes it might feel like you're abandoning the ascending right through the body plan. But it's just the density of the body um, that's being transmuted, evolving into the new, uh, which can make, you know, the old structure feel heavy and sleepy and out of sync uh, with the high vibe of this of this new next step that we're moving into. So it's um, it's something that is a a personal choice, but but we're having I feel like we're having this conversation about transcending archetypes right now so that everyone can check in and go, am I believing my old self? You know, am I believing my lower self more than my higher self? You know, where is my consciousness focused? Yeah. And no, and I think it's wonderful also no, I I think it's wonderful also because again, as we're being active in a whole new way, as our crystalline energy is really 
ramping up and we're stepping into, um, and I hesitate to call it, but, but it is, and it's not from an archetype, but it's more from the energetic component of, of what it entails, the Christed consciousness energy. We're being asked to co-create with the divine. And so right. by tapping into definitions of the past, that's not a new creation. That's not divine creation that we're being invited into. So what we're doing by latching on to those old definitions is we're holding on to mechanisms that are crumbling underneath us anyway. And that's what's causing a lot of the resistance as well, causing a lot of the suffering, if you will, because of those identities and where it's, we're looking for community and it's, it can be really uncomfortable to sit in that void while we're transitioning through. Correct. And there's, there's lessons of unconditional love and presence and, and the Christed presence to learn when, even when we're, you know, hanging out or doing gatherings or ceremony or whatever with our, with our light tribe, there's still the, the, you know, the honoring of the personal thing without getting frustrated that it's, it may be extreme, you know, your experience may be very different from other people's experience or how come that person isn't where we are, all that stuff. But we're being asked to expand to permanently merge with the future self and focus on what we are becoming rather than what we have been. So this, there's, there's a great resolution of conflict, especially this year with the eclipse and, and the equinox passage and, and December. It's this resolution of conflicts and, and that is is also a resolution of conflict within, which assists the resolution of conflict without, because the collective is moving away from conceptualizing unity consciousness as a theory or a catchphrase and applying the inner work to the outer projection of the external collective. So it's important for all of us to to not just, you know, scan an article and go, oh, yes, I have to express my unique Christ itself. You know, you've got to do the work and take a moment and really honor that and go, what do I truly feel like expressing now? Not what I have to express, not what I was told to express, not uh, what any of our our way showers or, or those that, that came before us uh, expressed, but what's happening right here, right now, and that's where you find the unconditional love and the pure Christ consciousness and all this beautiful uh, acceptance and a a desire to create in a different way. And all of us are figuring it out. This is where you know, divine cosmic patience comes, comes into play because all of us are like, mm, okay, I'm going to attempt to create this thing or something new. And then the, the timing is all um, a, a little crazy right now because of the timeline, uh, the timeline shifting and the bifurcation. So creations don't land the way they used to. You can't plan on much. You know, it's like you start creating something and all of a sudden it feels like it's been created already. You know, that's a, a side effect of this getting into zero point. You're like, well, I thought about it yesterday, and now that energy is gone, you know, or even the next moment, you're just like, uh, did I do it already? What happened? You know, it's just like, it, it's not that the air goes out of your sails. It's just like, it feels like it's been done already, which is part of this wild timeline shifting thing that we have. But but when it comes to exploring kind of our next level creations, we're all just kind of playing with the tools that are available and kind of bridging to the next thing. And I feel that uh, that way showers understand that we probably won't be playing with the, the same tools with the same levels of consciousness uh, for much longer. You know, you're not going to be doing, you know, John will not be hosting the Beyond the Ordinary show for 10 years. <laughs> it's not right. going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's just, you can feel it. It's just like, ah, we got to stay wide open, you know, because because uh, otherwise, you know, you, you end up just kind of recreating the old self, and you want to move into the new self. So it's uh, it's 
it can be challenging right now. And the, the cool thing right now is that no one can see what the new thing looks like with absolute clarity. We can take a look, you know, we can imagine, you know, we've had the visions, you get a lot of visions of what guy is doing, what the sun's doing and, and this whole universal thing. But there's, it, it's wonderful because it is in such flux right now that just like our creations, you know, as a reflection, uh, it, it just lands. You know, the vision doesn't land like like the way that they used to, like this is going to happen. There you go, you know, and here's the time or whatever. It's just we're still dealing with all of this fluctuation, which I find really beautiful because that's the for for me that's that that's the interesting part is wow, it's really wonderful to see who is embracing the absolute not knowing, you know, really going into the unknown. Uh, with an open heart, which teaches you to be absolutely present with people and yourself, and and who's still trying to create what they, you know, what they did before, and how challenging that can be. You know, I feel it does it does serve a great uh, portion of the of the new age old age community to um, to continue those conversations because that's where they're at. But us as way showers need to kind of you know, kind of boldly go into that new thing and say, you know what, I went into this new thing and suddenly I'm finding, you know, there's all these predictions about this emotional full moon, you know, what John and I were talking about before the show and I didn't feel it at all. Or, you know, predictions about, you know, this is what's going to happen, that's going to happen, this is how you feel today, you know, or the solar flare made me do this. And I'm I'm just kind of, you know, sitting back and watching going, no, no, that that didn't happen for me. Okay. So I I just honor my own experience, share my own experience, you know, share this uh, message of transcending archetypes and and hopefully it will uh, assist people who are like, hey, yeah, me too. Yeah, a little bit different, but me too. And I think it's important that we all honor that. Yeah, me too. A little bit different. But yeah, I'm, it's something similar. Or perhaps it's just, you know, I always felt that Source was just having a conversation with itself. That's what this whole thing was about. And as, you know, ultimate prime creator, it was just like, let's just see what happens. What if I did this? What if I did that? What if I did that? And uh, just to know more of itself. And I I find that to be, a very comforting place during this this uh, time of rapid change and complexity, and uh, which actually, you know, it becomes very simple. Even though there's a lot of rapid change and everything, you step back from it, you're like, I'm just going to like watch that and and see what happens. And it's then you start feeling like source itself. And for me, that's the comfortable place right now, rather than trying to figure it out trying to, uh, you know, kind of push issue. Yes, there are missions of service and preparation, and that's just part of being a gatekeeper, grid worker, light worker. You know, that's that's until we completely uh, you know, go to the higher timeline um, that that will be consistent. But outside of of that and assisting people, it's just kind of, you're just kind of like backing away from the conversations about uh, the, this kind of these old belief systems and also honoring them for what they were at the same time. You know, there's no judgment involved. It's not wrong. It's just, you know, we used that for a long time and it was extremely helpful. And it is still extremely helpful for a lot of people. So we, we honor that. You know, there's no judgment on somebody's journey uh, but it's it's kind of interesting to go into that high vibe conversation and go you know what I just I'm just not having that same experience and by expressing it you know either to yourself or to to other people it uh, it can it can provide you know somewhat of a, a stable 
comforting sensation <laughs> as we go through this very bizarre year of, of 2017. You know, the things that have happened to me this year, uh, I, I could not and would not have, have predicted at all. It's very interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, it makes tremendous sense. Yeah, I love this conversation. Yeah. It's so relevant. Sandra, I am guided to take some live calls for our audience because I know there's a lot of people with questions on the line. It's, sure. Would you mind we jump into that? Yeah, that's great. Let's go into our live callers here. So, Thank you. Um, just what you were talking about, the timelines shifting and, um, you know, some people feeling stuck in it a little bit. I would love to get your perspective on trusting your own instinct when you think it's time to do something, but if kind of convention tells you not yet. Um, you know, whether it's astrological or, you know, like Mercury in retrograde, that kind of thing. How do you rectify both? Because you also mentioned we were living in multiple dimensions, and that really does ring true. It, it's interesting because for the past, uh, goodness, how long has it been now? Four years, five years of receiving these um, these gateway passages and everything, a lot of time they were synced with uh, moon activity, solar activity, uh, different mm -hmm. alignments, which I found interesting. And then it, uh, and, and then the conversation changed uh, upstairs, let's say, where they were like, "Well, you know, there's so many belief systems about what the what this moon means and what this, you know, this alignment means mm -hmm. and that means and everything. Why don't we?" use it to our benefit and it will a attract more people to a collective trigger if you use uh, a full moon, a new moon, um, you know, an alignment, things like that. So I found it interesting mm -hmm. that even the higher realms were like, wow, you, you know, you guys won't let go of some of those belief systems, so let's use it to our <laughs> advantage. And then it started, and then it started changing. Like, I feel like it's, it's, going through a dramatic shift right now you know, we've got this massive eclipse coming up um mm -hmm. which is uh which is incredibly symbolic and mystical and esoteric mm -hmm. um however when it comes to um a personal uh, a personal level i started noticing that the gateway dates suddenly were not um syncing up with like astrological anything and for a lot of people, mm -hmm. they're like, that doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even coordinate with astrology. And I was like, well, why should it? You know, they were just using that as a way to get us all together, you know, because there were so many belief systems about that. But when it comes to uh, creating with this, in this energy, it's true experimentation. You know, in, mm -hmm. in the moment, I am extremely patient with this. And yes, I I still... The, you know, light ground intentions. If I really want to create something with ease mm -hmm. and grace, and it's something that either I have to do or I really want to do, uh, I will, um, you know, set, set up a crystal grid for it and, and ask the crystal beings to come in because they're part of this crystalline consciousness and kind of connect to that. But then I, I let it go. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a real, like, let's, let's call in, like, what if, you know, let's set up all these, these little intentions, like grounded into this reality by writing it down, you know, whether you, you put mm -hmm. the words in the middle of a grid or whatever, and see what happens. And then I completely let the, the higher self, the multiple higher selves, uh, show me what needs to be paid attention to. So I'm like, just show me, and I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to do something completely different rather than digging into, I have to get this done or whatever, and I'm just going to see what happens. And oh, even, and you know, I'm, yeah, it, it's just you, you let, and then you pay attention to the signs. You know, it's like any creation. It's like in, in the highest interest of all concerned, highest levels of service, show me, or be specific, show me three things today that points me to which of these projects I should pay attention to or whether or not this even has to be created. You know, a lot of the times you light ground something and it feels like it's already been done. So you're like, mm, there's no, there's nothing there. There's no new energy there. So you just let it go. You know, you're like, mm -hmm. well, maybe it'll come back later. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, maybe it's not today. Maybe it's tomorrow afternoon. Maybe it's next Saturday. You know, you just let it, let it be so that you're not, um, attempting to 
to control. You know, mastery is not about control. Which is, mm-hmm. is, you know, a lot of people are taught, you know, mastery, you have to control everything. It's like, mm-mm, that's the old light. That's the old way. You know, we're not uh, we're not playing with the archetype of the magician <laughs> anymore. Yeah. You know, we're like, okay, I really want to be in sync with this higher thing that's going on. So show me. And then, you know, all of us, if, you're, if you've been paying attention, you're on the path, you're going to see... You know, you'll you'll see the bird, you'll find the object, you'll cross paths with the person, and you you need to change your day, you know, so you're not walking through the day in the same way. You're like, well, okay, there's that, and if it's something brand new, do something brand new. You know, work like mm. a work like your higher self. You know, your higher your higher levels are coordinating on galactic levels, so they, you know, us we understand that things in density are reflections of things that are happening in the higher realm. And if you, in density, we tend to, you know, just kind of keep doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. And if you want to create something new, you're just like caught in this loop, you know, in density. So you level up, you behave as your higher self, and you go, so I want something new to come in. I need to open this pathway for this new energy to come in or to flow into my creation. Does that make sense? That does. Thank you. That's so empowering. I really appreciate that. It was a very good reminder. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. But I want to take some questions that were coming in through the webcast. Um, and it, I'm actually going to ask, there's two questions from two different people. One person didn't write their name, but they're so related that I'm hoping that we can cover both of them within the same response. Um, so the first wonderful. person wrote, so if it's so if it's true that we're co-creators who no longer need to wait for shifts, what exactly needs to happen to promote this on a daily basis, right? And then Alyssa from SoCal, thank you, Alyssa, for writing this in. How do we fast track our awakening so we can remember our truth and authentic selves, our spiritual gifts and galactic wisdom to get to our purpose, work, and creation motive we've been in the holding pattern? Um where do we place our focus, energy, and action? Because I'm feeling so uncertain about how to get to the next step. That's a long question. <laughs> what was is. the first one? It feels like a energy. year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first one? <laughs> the first one is if we're co-creating, then what is – oh, let me get back to her question here. Um, oh, yeah. So if it's true that we're co-creators and we no longer need to wait for the shifts, what exactly needs to happen to promote this on a daily basis? You're, you, sh- you, should be do- you should be doing it, sister. Okay, so this is, this is <laughs> ascension. You know, ascension is a moment-to-moment consciousness. And this is, you know, this is something that ascension path is about, too. When you consistently practice being conscious in the moment, conscious of your choices, you are automatically feeding a new reality into the collective consciousness. And when you and somebody else or a couple of other people start doing that and, you know, kind of call, watching each other, calling each other on the carpet, kind of like, hey, brother, don't write that, that comment or why, why are you saying that? Or, hey, don't, you know, lower the vibration. You know, when you have people who kind of watch your back, it it does amplify it, which is why, you know, we create things like the light tribe and you're going to do a unity meditations three times on Sunday, no matter what. And we chose to set that up. And now we're feeding the collective consciousness with peace and harmony and balance and ascension and this acceleration of consciousness every Sunday three times. And it, it launches your week. You know, just simple things like that um, automatically feed the morphogenetic field. But when you're um, on a personal level, check yourself. You know, check yourself. Are you waiting for something to be created or are you creating it? When we talk about stepping into a creator state of consciousness and we're evolving into this creator beingness, it's not something that magically gets bestowed upon us. You know, we are all 
yes, we are all, you know, united at the highest of levels. We're all source. And yes, at the, you know, highest of levels, there's just a few oversouls playing around down here. However, this fractalization effort is you, you, if, you know, awakening and ascension are a responsibility. And when you move into that, you know, and again, it's personal choice. A lot of people just don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the consciousness or they did too much damage to their DNA or they're just not destined to be a way shower, you know, to, to actually stay conscious all the time, you know, to actually pay attention to what's going on. If you are one of those people, then this this is the time. You know, this is when you choose every time I, you know, pick up a glass of water, I'm going to bless it and give it my intention. These little things that you do moment to moment, not treating the, the consciousness around you, whether it's a person or an elemental or an animal or, you know, any of the kingdoms or even what what we, you know, supposedly call inanimate objects, everything around you that you interact with should be treated in an uh, honorable, conscious way. And that's where you get into a lot of forgiveness and gratitude and all the foundational aspects of a spiritual process, of an ascension process, is moment-by-moment conscious choice. And that's when you start stepping into being a true creator. You know, it's not something that, you know, a, a master gives you the magic shazam and you're done. You know, it's not like a, a ship lands, oh my goodness, you know, the whole ship landing thing. It's like, yeah, eventually that will happen. I actually see light ships as a completely different thing now. So that's just, you know, that's my personal journey. But um, it's, you know, these are all bridges for us to fully step into our hugeness. You know, this divine human thing is huge we're huge beings you know you realize you're the larger being in the room and that's not person to person that's you and all this external stuff that may uh, be convincing you otherwise you know you step into your true creator beingness and then all the other stuff and all that limitations fade away and freedom coaxes you to stretch your wings you know, the willingness is the key to way showership. And we create these pathways so that we allow others to experience these phases with more ease and grace. And that's the key to being a, a way shower is the willingness to be the weird one, the one experimenting with that, the one who puts all their focus on the current project and doesn't, you know, you're always going to slip back at the beginning you know, you're going to slip back and go, well, I'm just going to like ease back. I'm tired and blah, whatever. But uh, if you truly desire to be a way shower, if you truly desire to be, you know, one of the, the first to show humanity what's possible, um, it does take responsible creation. And I feel that I may have answered the second question in that response. Uh- I knew that you did, that you would. (laughs) (laughs) I was confident of that. So I think it's so wonderful. Thank you. And it's, and Sandra, for me, you hit it on the head. And what you're also inviting us to do and your reminder and and you hold the field so steady is you're just, you're so unbendable in it, truly. Um, Is your awareness of, our abilities to hold that vibration as way showers to really go and step into our hugeness. And again, you're walking it, but you see it in others. You see what's possible and you have that invitation with heart wide open um, as you're building bridges, inviting people to cross that bridge with you. And that's and so that only comes one from thing. proving it. Yes. I'm sorry. That, that only comes from proving it to yourself. You know, that faith comes from the consistent trial and error of the spiritual process and the ascension process. It's cons- it's consistently what what else do I need to to do to to challenge myself to get through all of the flotsam of what the old self was about 
and move forward, move forward, move forward. You know, we it's I, I have um, I'm very passionate about that, but I've also noticed that that activity in itself is is contagious. You know, it's it's people um, see that or feel that. You know, it's just a reflection of what other people have within them, you know, and I would not be experiencing that if I weren't standing on the shoulders of the first waivers and the and the and the, the gods and the gurus that came before me that laid out this path, you know, that laid out the possibility of this timeline. And as you start running into your future self, you're like, oh yeah, it was it was us the whole time. I mean, you know, it's all you know, part of the game. You can look at it that way. But it's right. it's like remember that the experience is its own reward. It is that and your consciousness shift is that the thing, you know. And you're certainly walking the experience again. When we met in person in Mount Shasta and, and we had it's it was just again so wonderful to spend time with you. It's just so mm-hmm. obvious that you're living it, that you're that you're in much of awe of your current reality as someone who would be witnessing going, oh, my God, what is she doing? <laughs> the things that you do. But it's, <laughs> it's a sense of adventure. It's a sense of play and and a sense of wonder in it also. It's like, I wonder what's coming up next or why it's coming up. And also confirming the process like, oh, look, this what, this is what came up. Um, yeah. Yeah, when I say level as of much intimacy. ease and yeah. grace. Yeah, when I say as much ease and grace as possible, the only reason why we consistently, you know, pray and invoke as much ease and grace as possible is, you know, that's self-evident. It means that we are experiencing, <laughs> you know, difficulty and challenges and and pushing through it anyway. So when we're saying as much ease and grace as possible, you know, it's uh, we're saying that not because we're, you know, skipping through daisies in this process it's because it is difficult (laughs) and it's built to be difficult and it's supposed to be difficult because we're transmuting you know entire galaxies worth of stuff through this this operation but it's it's i do i i have absolute faith in humanity and gaia and solaris and everything else to uh to to demonstrate um, what, what you know the the highest possible outcome for this whole operation. I agree, and it, from my personal experience, and this is my personal belief as well. But I don't think we would have signed up for anything less than what we're going through right now. I think our souls would be bored out of their minds <laughs> if we were to go through the challenges that we have chosen to go through. I think we've done it, and sure. anything less than would not be fulfilling to us in a grander scheme. And so as it's coming up, if you can just remember, try to remember, it's like, oh, I did this because I'm getting something far beyond what's on right. what's in front of me right now. I know that I am so able to transcend what's going on because I signed up for this. I signed up for this challenge and it's this puzzle. It's this unraveling that's taken place um, that I can feel the other side of. I've I know how to get there. I've charted this course, and I know I'm not doing it alone. Yeah, yeah. And you could feel like the the larger you know. It's beautiful to to experience like the larger operation and the mechanics of that. But it's on a on a personal level. It's. It, I, I hear so many people that uh, are like, "Oh, I, I'm, as soon as I'm out of body, I'm out of here." You know, going back to the yeah. Pleiades, going to the big blue spot in Sirius or whatever. And I'm like, "You're gonna miss it. You're mm-hmm. gonna miss it. It's way cool. <laughs> it's way cool. What's going on here? You're gonna miss it. You're gonna be bored. You're gonna be laying on the beach in Sirius and you're like, oh, wonder what's happening on Gaia." That was so unusual. <laughs> you know, so it's really have a deep appreciation for and realize that you're immortal. You know, don't just say it, know it, feel it. You know, you are that immortal divine beingness. 
Uh, and when you when you own that, when you own your own self empowerment, um, that's the self empowerment again is not about you know control and now I shall rule over the controllers. You know, it's not that thing. It, it's owning your heart. It's owning that true love and just looking around you and going, this whole thing is is brilliant. This whole operation is so brilliant. Look at what people are going through. Oh my goodness, how how is this whole thing gonna going to end? How are we going to come out of this? It's fantastic. But when we witness it, you know, when we document uh, through our, you know, our blogs, our videos, the conversation, whatever, when we document our progress, it's very important because it it lets us check in with, oh, look at this is the, the part where we dropped our old template, the old archetypes, and, and we're witnessing our own evolution. Like you can feel it. You can see it. You know, you can, you're, we're having those experiences. Or if you're not experiencing it on a personal level, do not be discouraged. Just stand up and cheer and say, go way showers, you know, go higher levels and you know, be, be the cheerleader because it's, we are all one. There is no hierarchy here mm-hmm. that's gone, we're done. And it's just, you know, cheer on the people who are willing. You know, if you're one of those people, and there are people who are just too sensitive or too, you know, they have too much PTSD from everything that's been going on here to um, to move forward. And we love you. And there's no judgment. You, not everybody has to do what what we're doing or what that guy next door is doing or that person over there or whatever. That's you. You got to drop that and just go. I'm here to hold space and be the cheerleader. That could be. Oh your God, there's some you know. there's some jobs other pe- I see other people doing, and no, thank you. I do not want yeah, to be in the job. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know so you're like, just, dude, you did what? You know, <laughs> yeah, like, well, know, you, that's great. amazing. I could never do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, and it's you know all of it isn't you know if we have to use the definition of importance at all anymore you know all of it is important you know because it is all source you know it's all source sorting out you know this universal thing that it created and calling it back going now what exactly happened and how am i going to get back here how am i going to get to that next thing and the next thing on the higher levels has already occurred that's the only reason why we are having the experiences that we're having right now, why there's higher timelines involved. It's because on the, on the higher level it's already occurred and we're just getting the, the bleed through, the drip down uh, effect, which is great. You know, we, we, get to, we get the cream. You know, don't think of the higher levels as like that's where all the cream is. You know, the cream is here, having the experience, going through it, your soul, your oversoul, your expressions, all your dimensional selves learn so much. They're all, you know, just just feeding on this experience and going, wow, you know, the glory <laughs> of this experience is just like reverberating through all these different expressions. So, you know, cheer, cheer it on, cheer humanity on through this thing, you know, and don't, um, you know, if there's a don't involved in this thing, don't focus on any of the lower stuff, you know, it, there's so much is happening. Every time, you know, if there's people who still pay attention to the news, you have to realize that the news's spin on things that are occurring in the world is is of a different agenda than what's actually occurring. And there's so much that that uh, that way showers or gatekeepers can't talk about, and we just have to say, trust us, it's going in a beautiful direction and it's happening very quickly and it ha- and uh, that that stuff has nothing to do with reval or waiting game type uh mechanisms you know this is this is where you prove it to everyone that you don't even need that you know you don't need some governmental uh changeover to change your life, your consciousness, or the global consciousness. You know, we're working on a consciousness level, not on this grounded, you know, money and light chips and all that other stuff. It's like we're we're flying right by that and going, that's interesting. Okay, what else is available? And going to go. the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, so wonderful. So I've got a question that came in from New Zealand that I really want to address. I think it's so relevant because I feel a lot of people have similar questions. And with that, Sandra, the question that came in from New Zealand, from Joanna, um, she wants to know, how do we open our own portals or use grids where we live to bring in more wonderful cosmic energies available to us at this time? In brief, well, that's a big conversation. But Mm. in your own personal space, Crystals are being used right now because it's a bridge to the crystal and consciousness and crystals, a lot of the crystals have crystal beings uh, uh, not attached to them, but they're actually a representation of crystal consciousness, a higher consciousness. So when you um, take crystals and plant them in the ground or in your personal space, and by plant I mean make a hole and Stick the crystal in there and ask it to connect to the spiritual sun, the the crystalline core of Gaia, and link it with your consciousness. Use your hands and link it up to the crystalline grid, the sun, the galactic center, great central sun source, just like what you do with your energy fields. It's the same. It's a reflection of that solar cosmic Christ thing. And then expand it out from there. Now, I, I recommend... Um, if if you're going to set up a uh, a grid point in in your backyard or whatever, clear the land, pray on it, bless water, pour the water on the land, use selenite powder, use sage, you know, classic ways of clearing land before you put the crystals in there, and uh, use your highest intention and be clear and ask the crystal to participate in the New Earth grid system. And then you link it. And I know that sounds like a really high-end skill, but uh, at the at the base of it, it's pretty simple. Um, you are using your divine human consciousness uh, through the heart, not through the mind, through the heart and through your hands to intentionally link that crystal to every crystal placed by a light worker, every crystal that is participating in the New Earth grid system, because it is crystalline based. Uh, every crystal uh, that is uh, light encoded for the highest primary timelines of ascension, but every um, sacred site that hasn't been revealed, the ancient solar temples, you know, all of these things that are still underneath the dirt, um, and the the light tribe itself. You know, there's a reason why we reinforce that every Sunday as we're actually working with that new earth grid system and infusing it with light. So if you're somebody that participates with the uh, unity meditations on Sunday, um, you are actually amplifying the new earth grid systems in every crystal placed by a light worker. You can link it to every sacred Christed gateway that has been opened by a gatekeeper. Feel free to consciously connect it to the pillars of light that are anchored in Mount Shasta. Um, I give you permission to do that. They are um, of a very high vibration and uh, will automatically uh, boost your 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 crystalline um, fields. You know, it's going to create a toroidal field when you open it. Uh, open it in a clockwise direction when you're going upward, counterclockwise direction when you're going downward. And uh, or just intend to open the toroidal field and ex- expand it out in the seven cosmic directions, you know, like a medicine wheel, north, east, southwest, uh, up up to the up to source, down to the crystalline core of Gaia, and through your heart center. So, and it's it's all done with um, the intention of amplifying uh, unity, consciousness, peace, harmony, ascension. Uh, otherwise, it, uh, if it has stray intentions, like I want to control my space or control others or whatever, it just won't work. All that stuff is getting knocked out. So uh, keep the intention pure. Do do the full on ceremony. You know, I'm I'm sitting. You know, everything kind of turns into this uh, this desire for purity. You know, I'm sitting. Uh, even on this call, even though no one can see me, I know that a lot of people can. <laughs> so I'm I'm dressed like a Lemurian today. So I've got my white dress on, I got my crystals on, and uh, it's you know everything. I've got my crystals in front of me, so everything just becomes this. Let us 
always carry the highest intention in every endeavor. You know, every every act of service becomes this beautiful way of of uh, of really honoring what we're becoming. You know, because if we're going to move into that, it's uh, you know, it's not a fake it till you make it thing. It's a let's do this now. You know, why let's uh, not wait, but let's have this creator consciousness in this now, and behave like that, and have that intention, and it it will work. It will work. And work with the crystals as beings, as consciousness, not as, you know, I'm going to program this crystal to bend to my will, you know, because a lot of crystals are already encoded uh, for crystal crystal consciousness. Um, I prefer to use quartz. Uh, if you're going to make a grid point, you could do quartz, uh, rose quartz, amethyst, emerald right now. There's a lot of activity with emeralds right now. But uh, those are the easiest to work with in this moment. Fantastic. Oh, I love that answer, Sandra. Thank you so much for that. And great question that came in. Thank you for opening mm-hmm. up that um, that for us as well. So that was wonderful. And I have to read this. This is more of a comment than a question that came from Leanne. Uh, and Leanne writes, I just wish to thank you, Sandra, for aiding and guiding me out of the fear of being my true self. Your example has shown my challenges that it's safe to come forward. Um you do you lead by example and you share by example and that's 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 the most powerful type of teacher that I know so I want to thank you for doing what you do um, for being so brave and stepping up when you have but even still as you continue to being at the forefront as to what is becoming available to us as we charter these um, this new territory so Thank you for what you do and how you do it, Sandra, and, and again, for being just a beautiful example for what's possible. Oh, blessings, Leanne. Thank you so much. It's an absolute honor. Thank you. And if you're like me, my, it's like my heart's feeling satiated. My being's feeling satiated with um, just with a knowingness. It's like it's it's confirmation. It's camaraderie. It's um, there's so much it's it's so it's i can't even speak to it in linear terms but it, from the comments that i'm getting on the webcast page you guys feel like it's like it's pulsing for you as well so thank each and every one of you for opening up the space um and for being so available for this conversation to take place in the way that sandra wanted to share it with us really it's it's an accelerated conversation if you will it's it's because it's it's just time um and and you guys invited in, so thank you for that. And Sandra, thank you again um, for doing what you do and how you do it. It's amazing, and thank you for spending this um, this time sharing your gift of, your gift of us. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm truly enjoying this exchange. Lovely. <laughs> and it's with that, everybody, that I want to um, wish you a fantastic evening. I send you a huge hug, all my love, and I look forward to seeing you on the next call. Good night. Thank you.